Hey everyone, thanks for checking out another video. Today I, I wanted to talk about a, and show you guys a troubling video that I found on the internet. It's a, a new training video by the New York City Police Department admonishing officers and warning them, basically telling them they can be arrested for employing some uh, control techniques. And many of the techniques, as I observe them, and based on my training experience, I think are perfectly valid techniques. And I think it could be counterproductive banning them and, and ultimately it could be dangerous. So I'm going to show the video and discuss that. Um, just so you know, if you haven't tuned into the channel before, my name is Thomas Baker. I am a former police officer and now I study police use of force as a PhD student. And I make these videos just so that people can uh, place the use of violence by police in some sort of context so the civilians who are unfamiliar can hear a policing perspective and then police officers can hear some critical uh, perspectives and uh, hopefully improve policing tactics. Um, if you find these useful, to find these videos useful, please subscribe, follow me on whatever platform you're on, visit thomasowenbaker.com for more content and, uh, and to sign up for the newsletter and, and track anything new that's coming out. So let's get to the video. And this was released a few days ago by the New York City Police Department. Criminal liability. I'm Detective Computer from the Physical Training and Tactics Department of the Police Department. So this is a person who trains I'm police officers in use of force with the New York City Police Department. Unit. I'm here to talk to you about the implications of the new laws. We already prohibit chokeholds in the department. And these laws were, were passed by the New York City, uh, uh, by New York City and they're being and so this is the police officer the police department's response so they're crafting new policies to compensate for these new laws that have passed been passed in the city to prohibit these techniques and my concern is is that the techniques i seeing i see being prohibited when i see these techniques being prohibited it's very clear to me that whoever wrote these laws and uh, whoever's implementing them does not really have uh, a solid understanding of police tactics or use of force uh, tactics of violence of jujitsu uh, wrestling um, any type of unarmed combat and i think it's very troubling to have a major american city have their police department be forced to follow a set of rules that are not informed by science or experience or expertise. And we train officers I'm normally very critical of policing. Or stand on a subject's back or chest. But the new laws have changed things. Officers who use a chokehold or sit, kneel, or stand on the back or chest of a subject may be subject to arrest themselves. Bringing resistant subjects into custody has always been challenging. And doesn't happen in it's slow motion. It's a impulse to do what you must to control the subject. The most common mistake is probably kneeling on a subject. And they say this is a common uh, quote unquote mistake. And when I see this technique, I see a police officer controlling his wrist, controlling the upper part of his arm, and then placing uh, downward pressure on the individual's back so that they're not able to get back up to the to their feet. Um, if you have a combative subject or someone who's engaged in active aggression, aggression or simply resisting, when I, I see this, I see this as a very valid technique. It puts the person on the ground and their waistband under their body and allows you to handcuff them without uh, having access to the to the as much access to the waistband or being able to turn point a weapon at the officer, um, I think this is a this is a valid control technique. There may be risks involved with this control technique, just like any other control technique. But removing this as an option and then telling officers they could be uh, fired or arrested for employing this technique uh, troubles me because if you remove this technique and the other techniques we're going to be addressing, then the officers will it would be incumbent upon them to rely on whatever techniques are left in their arsenal. And I know one technique that will remain there, and that's the use of lethal force. So if these confrontations are to escalate to a certain point, then officers will deploy lethal force. And by removing these lower levels of force, when they are valid, tactically sound and effective techniques, you're really placing in officers in a position and civilians in a position where uh, more serious use of violence could be employed and more injuries or even deaths could occur, in my opinion. Secure them in a prone position. Officers must understand that such actions are now misdemeanor crimes. Do not use a chokehold, neck hold, or headlock on the subject of an arrest. Do not sit, kneel, or stand on the subject's back or chest. Okay, I'm going, going to show, show some prohibited acts. Let's go through each of the prohibited actions and, and, and I'll give you guys my thoughts. The following positions are prohibited and may place pressure to the throat, windpipe, 
or carotid arteries. Placing my arm around the subject's neck while I'm... And he's going to say this applies either on, on the feet or on the ground, and this is a, a neck restraint. Um, in jiu-jitsu, they call it a rear naked choke, and the, ch the word choke is, is deceiving. It's not designed to... Uh, block airflow or crush the windpipe or damage the windpipe in any way. It's designed to use the arm, the leg, an object or whatnot to restrict blood flow either to or from or both to and from the brain to render the person unconscious or to place them at risk and provide them with a window where they can uh, comply with commands. I can think of, I very rarely use this when I was a police officer or I was for almost nine years. I can think of one instance where I had a person who uh, was chased from a stolen vehicle. We ended up on the ground in a struggle and uh, I ended up behind them and wrapped my legs around their waist. They were reaching in their waistband and I trapped their arm. I thought maybe they were going for a firearm. Turns out they were trying to uh, get rid of some crack cocaine. I had no idea what they were going for, but it, I was scared at the time so i used my leg to trap their arm from behind and then i have placed them in a rear naked choke I, I believed i was in a situation where this could escalate to lethal force if this person were uh were to retrieve a firearm so i placed my arm around their neck began to apply some pr pressure and give commands for them to comply i was relatively proficient at the technique and it trained it in a on the mats and jiu-jitsu classes on a regular basis and was able to to apply this in a safe and effective way and give commands. And the person said something like, you can't choke me. And then they complied. I said, I said something like, well, I'm going to, if you don't stop reaching for your waistband and they complied or placed in handcuffs and that ended the situation. If I had known that I would go to jail uh, for applying that technique, I ve very easily could have ended up that I, uh, uh, the struggle continued. I would have made distance. I would have drawn my weapon if I think they're reaching for a gun and I would have pointed my gun at them. And if they started pulling something out of that waistband and I could very easily interpret that as a firearm, I may have shot them. I don't, I don't know, but having watched just hundreds of these incidents and read about thousands of them, I, uh, time and time again, will say, I really wish those officers had, had trained jujitsu and were able to employ those techniques because I feel as though lives could be saved. So it's very, very disheartening to see a government step in and take tools that are far, that are far more effective and can cause less harm than some of the other techniques that they're going to leave on the table. And I feel as though it's just motivated by ignorance. Behind him, placing my arm around the There's another neck. technique. And this, it's got a, you, it's like a mod. This is a position that a lot of people end up in during, especially people who are not well trained during a, a dynamic struggle, during a, gra like two people grappling, like, like a wrestling match. Like, you might call it like a bulldog choke, I guess is what some people might call it. Um, not a great position to be in as the person applying it or the person here, but this is a position people end up on a regular basis. It's a natural position to land in. So telling police officers, if you end up in this position, which is, you know, there's not a lot of thought that goes into landing here. Um, you can't, uh, it, it seems strange that you would hold them accountable and could charge them. And we're going to hear later, they're saying that even if this is, if you end up in this position accidentally, you can be charged. Um, I would not be an officer in New York right now. If I were a police officer in New York and knew that I needed to go out and arrest people, I would, I would resign. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable being a police officer, having these techniques, these ones and the, the ones we're going to talk about prohibited. Placing my arm. Around Here's another technique. Neck. And I know if wow. you're not, if you're not familiar with violence, uh, the application of violence, um, and are not proficient in these techniques, this, these can look bad. This is, uh, this technique is something called the guillotine in jujitsu. So this would be if this person in the green were trying to tackle the officer, this would be a position you, you would, a technique you would utilize, not necessarily to even choke this person, but to keep them from taking you to the ground. Um, this is a defense. This can be a defensive position. Um, it can also be offensive. Uh, if you're on your back as a police officer and this person's on top of you, this could be a valid technique. If someone's going for your gun, there's a whole bunch of situations where applying a guillotine is a, is a valid technique. It's something that I've in practice applied hundreds of times. I've had people apply it on me hundreds of times without injury. Um, it can be used in such a way that you could hurt somebody if, if you, if you, uh, if you wanted to, but if you were trained and wanted to apply it safely, um, it is, it is something that can be done, um, in a gentle way. Any of these positions are also prohibited if we are in a grounded position. 
Police officers are craziness. prohibited from sitting, kneeling, this is where it gets really crazy. So what we've seen already is troubling to me, um, but uh, we're going to get even it gets uh, more, uh, even worse here. The following is a demonstration of techniques we cannot do. After initiating a takedown of the subject, I cannot kneel on the subject's back. Okay, this is uh, ridiculous. Um, so if I'm struggling with this individual by myself and I hold and I grab their arm and I'm off to the side, um, I have no control. You need to you need to have some type of you need to control either the hips or the head. Uh, you need to control somewhere somewhere in the back to control the rest of this person's body. So just the uh, this won't what they're describing. If you take away take away that knee, you can't control a person that way. I cannot kneel on the subject's neck. Okay, and the, he's saying the neck. If you end up in this position with your knee across the uh, above the arm using this tactic you don't place it on the neck you place it on the upper left it would be on the upper left shoulder and across the upper back not on the neck that would be uh, uh an improper application on the neck so you you don't need to be on the neck if you're if your leg is on this side you can apply downward pressure on the shoulder here especially if you had another officer lower on the body trying to control the hips and the leg there are people who don't want to go to jail and they struggle violently and it's not easy to control a person especially if they're larger than you i cannot sit Okay. On the subject's back. This is um, if I were if I were saying what would be an optimal position, the best position for an officer to be in, so that they couldn't be injured and the subject wouldn't be injured during a fight. Then I, I can't think of a much better position to be in than this. So your your the officer on back has his hips and the majority of his weight uh, on on the hips and and then on their knees, and they can sit that weight down on this on this individual's hips, keep them pinned to the ground. They can control. They can work on controlling an arm. They can give commands. This uh, person on the ground can't access a weapon and turn around and shoot them. This is a safe position for this officer to compose themselves, to come up with an arrest plan, to get on the radio and ask for assistance. Um, to give the the big thing is to talk and say, "Hey, you're not going to win. You're going to lose. You don't want more charges. Calm down." And give the person time. There's this the the Gracie family uh, who runs a, a training for officers. Call it the 100 second rule, where you give this person 100 seconds to struggle to wear themselves out, and you break their will, and then you ask for compliance. So if they want to fight with the police, hold them in this position, um, pin them to the ground, and let them struggle until they get tired, and then put them in handcuffs. Uh, this is this is uh, insane that you would not want police officers to control a subject this way. I can't, um, it, it, it boggles my mind that this would be made illegal. I cannot stand. Okay, this makes sense. I think it's ridiculous. It's funny he pulls up the, the radio. Um, I, I don't see a lot of instances where officers would stand and try to control someone this way. And I don't think it's effective or a valid technique. So I wouldn't train anyone to use this. I don't know. There could be a situation where this is valid. I, I, don't, I don't see it, so I don't have a problem with this not being used. From a face-up position, I cannot kneel on the subject's chest. <laughs> Again, how are you going to control them? On the subject's neck. I cannot sit. And this is this is the humdinger. So this is this is what in jujitsu is called the like a full mount. So you're in a mounted position here. This is a dominant position. This is a control position. This is a position that gives the officer they don't need to expand as anywhere near as much energy as the person on the ground. It's almost impossible for this person on the ground to deliver strikes at the officer that can cause real significant damage. Um, it's, it, it puts this person at a huge disadvantage, the officer at a huge advantage during the struggle. And um, that's what we want. We want, if an officer gets in a fight, we want them to be in a position where they can control the individual that they're fighting with without causing, with causing as little injury as, as possible. And these types of control techniques are as gentle as you're going to get. Vi violence in reality is, is a messy, horrible, nasty thing. Uh, there's blood, there's piss, there's shit. Who knows what's 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 happening? It's 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 gross. Um, to think you can make it clean and pass these very uh, clean rules, blocking you know the certain types of techniques. Um, it's uh, they're dynamic situations. Uh, it's 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 um, it doesn't make any sense. On the subject's chest, and I cannot stand 
on the subject. Again, this is <laughs> he pulls the radio out every time because it looks ridiculous. The subject in a prone position. The prone so position I think this is this is what they're saying um, is this is how they want you taking people into custody, not by putting the downward pressure. Um, but I think one thing that's interesting is that when they show this arrest technique, they show two people because there's no way that an individual officer could control someone this way. If you just tried to control one arm, they could just uh, roll over. <laughs> it doesn't, bodies, bodies don't work that way. Best option for controlling a resisting subject to complete handcuffing. Use arm holes and, other and you're still going to need. So if you if you apply this technique, you're still going to need to apply some kind of downward pressure. You're going to need somebody to get on this person's back and put put downward pressure. One of the officers is going to need to put their knee across their their hips and push down to keep them pinned down while you apply the the, the handcuffing uh, the handcuffs. Just holding arms off to the side. If it, there's a dedicated individual who wants to get away, um, unless you have some really strong officers that have a size advantage. Um, this is subject sloppy the cuffs are on. If you see your partner applying a chokehold or sit, kneel, or stand on a subject's back or chest, stop them or physically move them, just as you would stop or move an officer <laughs> to protect from crossfire dangers. Force guidelines. So they're saying that if an officer sees another officer uh, end up in one of those positions, that they should immediately go tell you know tell the officer to stop or push them off of the the suspect if if uh if they need to so what they're saying is is if a police officer got in a foot pursuit they're struggling with someone on the ground and they end up on top of that person that the next officer should should like tackle the officer off the top of them um it's it's uh if you're not I mean, it is just so ludicrous that um when using force, officers should apply no more than the reasonable force necessary to gain control Absolutely. of the subject. Contact with the subject's back or chest, besides sitting, kneeling, or standing, is still permissible and has not been criminalized. So you can put a hand on their Civil back. liability. <laughs> in addition to criminal liability and use of force cases, recently passed laws allow people to sue officers for various police actions. Officers may not be indemnified if they perform actions that are contrary to law or department policy. So they're saying that if you're if you do something like this, you could be charged and then you also be sued and the department's not going to protect you or pay the fees. Right to record. Okay. And they go into some some other topics. They go into right to record saying that officers can't restrict people from recording them while they're engaging in activities whatnot. That seems very reasonable to me this is a, uh, if a citizen wants to record a police officers making an arrest that that's their right um, but this is this is really troubling so I think that I think this is like jump the shark I think uh, is a is a good term to use where reform is needed but that reform needs to be um, informed with science and with uh, expertise in the field and if you were to bring in anyone, who has a re, you know a well trained person who understands unarmed combat understands interpersonal violence when weapons aren't involved and you had a conversation about how to control a subject how to control someone using the the re, the reasonable amount of force and only the force that is necessary that some of those techniques would be techniques that would be at the top of the list of the most effective and least harmful uh, the mount like. Uh, Getting on top of someone and controlling them that way is is a very uh, gentle and peaceful way to control a, a violent person. Just for example, if I were if I were a police officer and I was responding to a mental health crisis, someone was in a mental health crisis and they're assaulting people at a at a hospital or uh, an extended care facility or in, in their own home, and I thought, oh, this person's in crisis, they're not being violent because they're angry or because they're a bad guy, but because they have a medical condition. And if that person were, say, a female who weighs 130 pounds and I were the officer and I needed to control that person and I wanted to keep them from being injured, which I would, I, would, I wouldn't want them to be hurt. Um, and, I, and I needed to control them. I would want to get them to the ground um, would be one of the things I would want to do. And I'd want to get them in handcuffs, but 
I'd want to gain a dominant position to handcuff them so that they didn't hurt me, they didn't hurt themselves, they didn't fall, bang their head, I didn't have to use force that wasn't necessary, so I would try to get them to the ground. I would try to gain a dominant position, ideally some sort of mount position where I had my hips on their hips, pinning them to the ground, and I was able to control their arms and get them in, into handcuffs and, uh, and, and end the confrontation with as little, as few injuries as possible. And this law, these policies, this training is, uh, is uh, normally I don't, I don't want to be hyperbolic, but this is it's ridiculous. It's dangerous. If you, um, if you know anything about policing, you recognize this. If you know anything about use of force, you recognize this. If this bothers you, um, it should. Please uh, don't allow this to to be the norm in other jurisdictions across the country if you see this this these types of rules being passed in your in your jurisdiction think about it investigate it and maybe take action call your legislator because this is uh this is dangerous counterproductive and could cost lives both uh, police officer lives and civilian lives we want our policing we want it to be a peaceful profession. It is for the most part, but sometimes violence is necessary. It is something that's used and we should want our police officers to be proficient in the use of violence and have all of the skills and training that's required to use as little violence is as reasonably necessary to affect an arrest. By taking away these tools, you're doing the exact opposite. So again, sorry for the long video, sorry for the, the polemics, but if you, uh, if you like these videos, you find them useful, please subscribe, please follow me. Hit up the website, thomasowenbaker.com, and thank you very much.